the turn of last century, America was being put on wheels, and Henry Ford really more responsible than anybody else. But there was a segment of the population that wanted something more. They wanted something with luxury and prestige, a status symbol. Marmon had a great start on many of the other competitors at that time because the Marmon Company started out as machinists. They understood the milling process, the drilling process, the lathing, the turning process. So right early on, Marmon developed a reputation for not only building great cars, but cars that were reliable and cars that performed well. Like most of the early American car companies, they didn't have a way of promoting their cars, so they used racing as promotion. Uh, Marmon uh, entered various speed competitions, but their first big event was the first Indianapolis 500 of 1911. Everyone thought a European car would win, driven by a European driver. Well, as the race turned out, the race was not only won by an American, but an American car company from Indianapolis called Marmon. They used that race as advertising to sell their cars. All of a sudden, the newspapers, not just of North America, but the newspapers of the world, wanted to know, who are these guys? And there's your customer base. In the 1920s, one of the signs of a true luxury car was smoothness. And we know that the more cylinders a vehicle has, the smoother it's gonna operate. So Howard Marmon decides he wants to go with a 16-cylinder engine, almost unheard of at the time. What set Marmon apart was their use of aluminum for construction. And this development by using aluminum started in the 20s, but when the 16 was introduced, had reached its peak. The Marmon 16 was about 1,500 pounds lighter than its competition. Also, the engine in the Marmon 16 was made out of aluminum, which made it about 500 pounds less than the competitor's engines. Not only was that engine powerful and was that engine smooth, but it very rapidly developed a reputation for reliability as well. It's a robust engine. Another aspect of Marmon and the Marmon 16 was their insistence that each car went through a series of speed tests at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to assure that the car was perfect before it left the facility. They were tested in five different speeds, four accelerating speeds and one top speed. Each speed had to achieve a certain miles per hour, and that was signed off on. The final one was the car had to be driven for 10 miles at a speed of no less than 105 miles an hour open throttle. And once that was signed off on, the car could be ready to sell. Marmons themselves individually are considered to be the holy grail of the big classics in the pre-war era. Approximately 365 Marmon 16s were produced and approximately 70 of them exist today. The Greg Dawson Marmon 16 collection has four of the best examples of Marmon 16s known to exist. There's four different body styles. The most desirable being the convertible rumble seat coupe is one of five known to exist. Uh, two are in museums, so this is one of three publicly owned. Uh, it's a well-known car. It's been documented since day one. It's known as the Hamilton Marmon 16 because it was owned by the Hamilton family up till 1980 and has had three owners between 1980 and today. Uh, the Marmon 16 convertible sedan has a fully collapsible top, which in essence makes the car into an open phaeton. Um, it's had only four owners since new, all of which are documented, and it's been restored to match the convertible coupe. The Victoria Coupe was a, small, a smaller body, but a very elegant body. It featured what's called a Victoria body, which is known for its bustle back and a rear-mounted trunk. It's a four-passenger car with only two doors, so it's an enclosed car that can carry four people, but it's very sporty in appearance. The 3116 limousine was based on Marmon's sedan. It's the only sedan model known with the divider in it, which is, separates the chauffeur from the passengers. There's a speaker, and then there's a phone that could be passed amongst the passengers in the back so they can call the chauffeur and tell the chauffeur where they need to be taken. Like most limousines, the chauffeur area is very plain. It's done in black leather, as opposed to the rear section, which is very ornate with matching burl walnut throughout and a very ornate cloth interior. There is an incredible opportunity here presented by Meekham at Monterey 
because not only are Mekon presenting one Marmon 16, which is an incredibly rare opportunity, but in Monterey, Mekon will be presenting four different versions, body versions of the Marmon 16. All these cars are great driving automobiles. They've all been fitted with overdrives. They're all capable of performing at the speeds they were when they were first sold. And also they're fresh restorations that need nothing. The fact that four Marmons, four Marmon 16s, are coming to Mika Monterey is gonna send shockwaves throughout the collector car world. This is really gonna make a splash.